I'll begin by interpreting the problem statement. So I have this submerged concrete block and it's connected up to this gate and so it's pulling on this gate and there's a hinge here and so this block is holding the gate shut and the goal here is a minimum volume of concrete the specific weight of concrete is given and the gate dimensions 1 meter and 2 meters are given. Next I'll connect with what I already know. The cable will put a tension force there. The stop will push on the gate like this. However, this I would expect to be zero because I'm looking for the minimum volume of concrete of the block. The water We'll put a pressure force on here and so it looks like I have a statics problem involving summing moments about the hinge. Here's how I define the situation. I describe the problem in one statement. I sketch my situation diagram. I add the dimensions on and notice that I keep the variable L here. I describe the gate, it's one meter into the page, and I document the needed fluid properties here and the properties of the concrete here. And I should have probably written down an assumption and stated that the pulley is frictionless. Here's how I captured my goal. I wrote down the symbol, the units, and I described the goal in words to generate ideas for reaching my goals. I started with a free body diagram of the block. The reason was this free body diagram involves my goal which is the volume of the concrete block right there. So I wrote force equilibrium in the upward direction. Here's the equation. So my goal appears there. That's known. That's known. And if I can find an equation for the tension in the cable, I can solve this problem. To find an equation for the tension, I drew a free body diagram of the gate. Let me show you how I did it. First, I selected the gate as my system. I isolated it from its surrounding and sketched it as I've shown here. And the water line is kind of about right here. And so I start by sketching forces on this. And the first thing I want to do is put on the body force and so we'll have the weight of the gate right here and this will turn out to be unimportant but I like to always do my free body diagrams with the same set of steps so there's the body force then I examine everything that was touching the gate and sketch a surface force so here's the tension force due to the cable here's the force of the stop and I'm going to set that force equal to zero and document that there. And here's the hinge down here. Now, because this is a rectangular gate and it's oriented vertically, I know the center of pressure will be right here. So there's the center of pressure. And there's the force of pressure. And this dimension will be exactly L over 3. And that's just a fact that I know. And then at the hinge, there's a hinge force in the x direction and a hinge force in the y direction. Now my goal is the tension. So I'm going to sum moments right around the hinge, right around this point right here because this unknown force and this unknown force will not appear in the equations. So here's my moment equation. Here's that where I define positive. This term is the torque due to the tension in the cable and this term is the torque due to the pressure force with its moment arm of L over 3. So this torque and this torque sum to zero. In this equation the tension in the cable is my goal. L is known, but I don't know the force of pressure on the gate. 
this becomes my new goal. To find the force due to pressure, my new goal, I selected the panel equation which I've written here. And this says that the force due to pressure is the pressure at the depth of the centroid, and I don't know that yet, but I can easily find that, times the area of the panel. And the submerged area of the panel is the height, L, and the area into the paper, which is L over 2. So these quantities are known, and my new goal is the pressure at the depth of the centroid. My new goal is the pressure at the depth of the centroid, so I'm looking for the pressure at this depth. To find this pressure, I'll apply the hydrostatic equation, written here, and I'll define my two points, point 0.1 and point 0.2. This is the pressure difference, so that's the pressure at this depth minus the pressure at the surface, and this pressure is zero, so this term simply becomes the pressure at the depth of the centroid and I'll drop down specific weight of water. And delta Z is simply the elevation change between these two points, which is the height of the panel, L, divided by 2. And in this equation, there's my goal. This is known, and this is known. So I rewrote my work to make it neater. And I noted, looking back, that I now have four equations and four unknowns. So the hydrostatic equation is equation number four. The panel equation is equation three. Moment equilibrium about the hinge is equation number two. Force equilibrium applied to the block is equation number one. Now I just need to find the easiest way to solve these four equations. So my plan is calculate the pressure at the depth of the centroid with equation four. Calculate the net pressure force, or resultant pressure force, with the panel equation, which is equation number three. Calculate the tension in the cable with moment equilibrium, equation two. And lastly, find the problem goal, the volume of the concrete, by applying force equilibrium, which is equation one. The pressure at the depth of the centroid is 9,800 pascals. The resultant force due to pressure is 19,000 600 newtons. The tension in the cable is 5,227 newtons. To find the volume of concrete, I did some steps of algebra, substituted in numbers, carried in canceled units, and the final answer is right here. The volume of concrete is 0 0.379 cubic meters. Review comment number one. To visualize the volume of the concrete block, I did a calculation and found that the concrete block would need to be about 0.7 meters on a side. So I visualized a cube that's like this, and that's about two foot on each side. So I can get kind of a picture of that. Review comment number two. To visualize moment equilibrium, I noted that the tension force in the cable is about 1,000 pounds force, and the resultant pressure force is about 4,000 pounds force. And I can see how the torques due to each of these forces will sum to zero if I sum around the hinge. Comment number three. Whenever I have a rectangular panel that's oriented vertically, as shown here, I can divide the panel into three parts, kind of like one there, one there. And I know the center of pressure, when I go through all the calculation, will end up being two-thirds of the way down, or one-third from the bottom. So two-thirds and one-third. And I use this fact over and over, and it saves me a few calculations. That concludes this example. I hope you found this very useful. We'll see you next time.